From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thank you for joining me today. You know, of all the guests I have had on my show, I will have to say this is the most special guest I've had. He's been on the show once before, but what makes him the most special guest is that he's my son. My guest today is David Altizer. David, say hello. Hello. I'm so glad you're on the show. Today we're going to be talking about YouTube. We spoke earlier uh, last year, I I spoke with David, and he talked about filmmaking and basically, uh, specifically filmmaking for beginners. He talked about how to break into filmmaking. David is a filmmaker here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you have uh, someone you know, a college student, a high school student, who's interested in that, you might want to check that show out on my website, rickaltizer.com. But today we're going to talk about YouTube, the phenomenon uh, that has, is happening now, how people are making money and how it's working. So uh, today's going to be a great, uh, a great show on YouTube and how, the, how it's changed. So David, uh, you are actually being paid. You actually are someone who's making YouTube content on a regular basis. Uh, let's start off by just talking a little bit about uh, you know, what you're doing on YouTube right now. Well, first off, let me clarify. I am getting paid by a company who has hired me to make YouTube videos. I am not yet making enough money just off of ad revenue uh, to pay my bills. So just to make that clear, I am getting paid to make YouTube videos. However, I'm not getting paid directly from YouTube, at least not enough to survive. I got my first check from Google uh, last month and it was $160. So uh, definitely not enough yet, but I will say I do have some friends that are making a full-time living on YouTube and I am uh, working hard to get to that point to be able to make enough to survive completely off of YouTube and other uh, avenues as well through merchandise and whatnot. But um, but yeah, it, it's been different in this last year since last time we talked. Um, I started my YouTube channel about a year ago, to, uh, right now actually. I started a, a gear channel. I was reviewing, I started out by reviewing my MacBook Pro, and then I talked about some cameras that I purchased and just my thoughts on it. And I really enjoyed it because it was something that allowed me to have full creative control and just make whatever I wanted. And it was a lot of fun and I got some good feedback and a company reached out to me uh, and asked if I'd be interested in being the host on their channel. They do similar type videos, cameras and gear and reviews, things like that for filmmakers and photographers. And I said, of course, I'd be interested. So we talked and turns out they were willing to pay me pretty much a full time rate uh, as a contractor to make eight videos a a month for them. And so now I've been doing that for about six months. And only in the last couple of months have I been able to fully transition from being a freelance filmmaker to a full time YouTuber, if you will, (laughs) if you want to call it that. But um, I've learned a lot and I've been learning a lot about the platform. Um, I went to a, a big conference held by this guy named Tim Schmoyer. If you're interested in YouTube and being involved in a YouTube channel and making your own uh, channel and making money, I would definitely check out his channel. It's called Video Creators on YouTube and his name is Tim Schmoyer. Uh, it, I think it's a German last name, like our last name, Altizer. So, uh, definitely sounds strange, but, um, he has some great content and I learned a lot at this conference. He taught us how to make money on YouTube, learning how to harness, um, the platform and just knowing how to make videos because it's a lot different than the traditional films that I was making in the past where it was purely just about making an, uh, an entertaining story. That's obviously something that's really key in YouTube is making good content. But beyond that, knowing how to harness the platform by generating subscribers, getting people involved in the comments section, getting people liking your videos, um, and 
learning the algorithm, YouTube is basically a giant robot that is getting hundreds of thousands of minutes worth of content every single day. People are uploading um, just tons of a video every single day, and YouTube is is a giant robot that is deciding who's making money and figuring out who to promote to who. And when you search for a video, it's using the algorithm to decide which video is best for the person searching. And it's real important to know how to uh, tag your videos and how to optimize your videos so that when somebody searches for something, YouTube is going to recommend your video to them. And there's a lot of cheats and a lot of little ways to uh, to get in that system. And um, recently, I've been really seeing the fruits of uh, the things that I've learned there uh, coming up. I, in fact, if you search for certain camera reviews, my videos are number two or number three on the results page now when you search for a certain thing. Um, so it's definitely working, and I'm, I'm seeing some fruit there. But it's a long game. It, it takes several years to to grow uh, a channel to become something that can actually sustain you financially. Talk to me about how YouTube is changing the way people are viewing media. Talk to me about what's happening in this kind of the shift towards YouTube viewing. Sure. Uh, obviously, YouTube isn't brand new. It's been around for about a decade now. I remember it came out. Uh, in 2007, 2006 or so. And when I was in high school, it was brand new and lots of viral videos were happening. We all know the, remember the video, the history of dance. And it was this guy that would did like 20 different styles of dance throughout history. And that was a big viral video. And, you know, there was all these viral videos that were on YouTube and it was interesting for sure back then, but nobody really knew what it was and how to make any money on it. In fact, there was several years where there were some YouTubers that were on it that were getting millions of views, but there was no AdSense built in yet. So nobody was actually making money on it. And it's only been in the last five years or so that people have been able to make money. And as soon as YouTube figured out how to make money by promoting ads in front of people's videos is when people started making content that was very similar to television. In fact, now we're seeing lots of YouTubers coming up that are making more money and getting more views than Good Morning America in a lot of ways. And it's really interesting because you're completely removing the middleman of having a production company involved and it's purely creators making content and getting paid for that content. And so we're seeing a huge shift in viewership, especially with the younger audiences. Um, kids in particular, on average, are spending four hours a day on YouTube. They're not watching television. They're not they're not watching cartoons on Saturday mornings uh, like how I did when I was growing up. They're watching daily YouTube videos, and there's content creators that are making content for those kids. And those people that are making those shows are making millions of dollars making cartoons or animations or a lot of vloggers out there that are making daily vlogs um, designed specifically for kids. And it's really fun. It's a really fun time right now because it's kind of like the Wild West. And to be honest, I really feel like the bigger companies like NBC and ABC are not – they just don't know what to do. They don't know how to get in on that. And so right now, a lot of people are just kind of coming out of nowhere and starting YouTube channels and becoming really successful. And it's really interesting to see. And – um it's definitely shifting television uh, because, in a way, YouTube is kind of replacing television for a lot of people, especially the younger audiences. You are listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM. My guest today is David Altizer. He is my son, a, a filmmaker, and now a professional YouTube provider. And we're talking today about YouTube, about uh, making videos for YouTube, about the phenomenon of YouTube and what's happening with that. And so kind of continuing in that vein, David, uh, explain to the audience, how does someone... Uh, put a video up on YouTube and make money? How, how does that work? 
Well, there's a lot of different ways, and YouTube changes those ways every single day. In fact, recently, in the last couple of months, YouTube has changed their policy completely. And uh, you, the requirement now to make money is a little bit harder, um, and that is purely because a lot of people are using spam uh, channels to make money. And so YouTube has upped their requirement. You now have to have several thousand hours worth of content um, that are being viewed a month to be included in the AdSense platform. Um, or you have to have, I think, like ser- several thousand subscribers. And so by doing this, they're removing 90% of the spam channels that were making money Um and YouTube's always changing things like this. To be honest, the the recent change is only affecting people that were only making like a hundred dollars a month. So, it's, well, explain explain how you do make money. How do you make money <laughs> on YouTube? What what is that all about? So, obviously, uh, you make money based off of AdSense, which is part of Google, and it's attached to the videos that you produce. So, if you're uh, so so, let me just 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 to clarify for the people who might not be you know, uh, aware of the lingo, the YouTube lingo, AdSense, that is, they put ads in front of a YouTube video. So you post a video, and sometimes you go to a YouTube video, and there will be an advertisement that comes up, and it says, you know, you know, after five seconds, you can close this ad if you want. So those ads, when people view those, for each one that gets viewed, the, the content provider gets a little bit of money. Is that correct? Correct. And also, YouTube has a paid subscription called YouTube Red. It's $9 a month. And when you subscribe to that, it removes all the ads from YouTube. But the benefit is anytime you watch a video on YouTube, the creator actually makes a higher percentage uh, of money compared to what just an ad would be. So if you really want to help out YouTubers, um, subscribe to YouTube Red, and you'll get rid of all the ads. Plus, you'll actually be paying YouTube creators even more percentage than what the ad revenue already creates. But it's all based on an algorithm that nobody actually fully understands or knows because it's being changed all the time. But it really comes down to how many views a person is getting on a per hour basis or per month basis. So take, for example, uh, say you get a viral video and you get a million views in one day. That would be a very big video. That would be a huge success. That will equate to roughly five to $6,000 potentially, um, if, depending on how many views you get and, and, how many t- and how much time you get. But a million views spread across six months is... Still a lot of money, you know, you probably get about $1,000 for something like that. It's not going to be as big as a million views in one day. So it's all based on how quickly you get your views and how many views you get. That's pretty much pretty much it. So then uh, content providers then regularly will put up a video and they'll uh, amortize it, which means they'll, they'll have advertisements uh, on there. And um, then when people see those videos, the more videos they put up, that's the more money they make over time. So, so how many videos then are these, these people putting up? Are they putting up one a week, one a month? How often are they doing it? So obviously the more videos you have, the more chances you have to get more views. And the more views you get, the more money you make. Um, also because YouTube is replacing television, if you think about it in terms of television, if you're putting out a video every single day, then people will subscribe to your channel and they'll expect to see a video every single day. And so that's really where it comes down to building a brand and building a following of people who are willing to actually watch your videos on a daily basis. If that's the case, you start a snowball effect. And if you're putting out daily content in particular, you're really going to generate a, a large following if you're talking about things that are interesting and if you're adding value to people's lives. Um, and so you know when you when you turn on the TV, you, you expect NBC to be playing a show at any hour. They're always putting out content every single day. And, you know, if there's a certain TV show that you like to watch that comes on on Tuesday nights, 
you know, you watch it on Tuesday and then the next Tuesday you expect it to be on at the same time on that same day. So in the same way on YouTube, if you pick a certain day, for example, and say, I will post a video every single Wednesday, it gets people excited to, you know, for your next video to come out that next week. Or if you post a video every single day, people will subscribe and expect you to post every day. I I will say that it's not uh, from what I've heard from other YouTube creators, it's not good to rely on the money that you make off of ads as your primary source of income because YouTube changes their algorithm so much and you just never know what to expect. So a lot of YouTubers now are actually making at least half of their income in other ways by either Patreon, which is a subscription-based kind of donation platform or selling merchandise like t-shirts or different things like that or a course say i'm you know teaching someone how to be a filmmaker well you can watch my youtube videos for free but then for twenty dollars you can get a four-hour course where i describe how to use a certain camera or whatever so there's a lot of different ways to do that and youtube in a way is a platform to build a following or an audience and to to have fans that are willing to buy uh, things from you. And that's really how a lot of people actually are making money. You're listening to the Rick Altizer show on bot radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM in Nashville. My guest today is, is, uh, is David Altizer. He is my son and, uh, he is a YouTube content creator and he's actually making his, uh, his income by a company that's paying him to make YouTube videos. Uh, so, so David, you, you, what makes for a popular YouTube video? You'll see some videos and there'll be 110 views, and then some videos have 4 million views. What, what is it that, that are there things that people can do to make their views more? Or you know, how do these people, uh, how are they getting a million views? How is that happening? Well, I really feel like at the end of the day, content is king. And that's the case with everything, really. It comes down to how good is the story and how well is is the video produced. That applies to filmmaking, that applies to television, and that still applies to YouTube. The only difference is with YouTube, you actually have a, a comment section below the video where people will chime in and give their input or a place for somebody to share the video and give it a thumbs up. You don't get that when you watch a movie at the movie theater. There's no comment section below the screen where audience members can react to it. There's no place for somebody to literally share that video with someone. It's a very secluded place in a dark room, whereas YouTube is a social platform just like Facebook or Twitter. So it's kind of a combination of television and social media. And so what happens on social media? Well, if you see something that you like, you share it with your friends. A lot of the things that work well and that go viral on YouTube are things that kind of work well in a uh, circus or or street performers, things that are fascinating and things that are really exciting and entertaining, things that you watch something and you immediately want to share it with your friend, like a cat jumping in a small little vase or uh, somebody doing trick shots with ping pong balls bouncing off of a table and going into a cup. Lots of things that's like, oh my gosh, wow, that was amazing. So that's one way to go viral is to just make something pure, just amazing. Another way to go viral is to do something relevant or to accidentally film something that is just, you know, unexpected, something that is a news story, obviously. But the most practical way to quote go viral is not really to go viral at all, but to have an audience of people that are tuning in on your show every single day. In the same way that millions of people watch Jimmy Fallon every night, if you generate enough people that are interested in your channel who are willing to subscribe to your channel, again, they're going to they're gonna want to watch all your, your videos in the same way that people watch television shows. So that's a, more of a slow burn. If you can generate an audience of millions of people, then chances are you're going to have you know 10 or 20% of those 5 million people that have subscribed to watch your videos. And over time, once you've put out 300 videos and you're getting, you know, 100,000 to 500,000 views per video, you're generating some serious money. I have a friend who 
started YouTube just one year ago, and he's putting out at least three to four videos a, a week, and he's now making about $20,000 a month. He's not getting massive 5 million viewed videos. He's getting videos that are getting 100 to 200,000 views per video, but it's consistent. And that really adds up. And that's a much more practical way to make income on YouTube is to actually build an audience and to kind of slowly get into it. I would recommend anybody who has any interest in this or has a, a passion or a hobby like woodworking or fishing or knitting or anything like that to, to just get your iPhone and start filming content. Teach somebody something that you know. Teach them how to build a cabinet. Teach them how to catch a bass. You know, different things that you're interested in that you have a passion in. Film yourself teaching that and do it on a regular basis, like one a week or so. And you'll slowly see, you'll see people that stick around and subscribe to your channel and comment and uh, and interact with your stuff. And that's one thing that I found on my uh, camera channel. I, there's people that comment on every single video and I'm starting to recognize their their names. I'm seeing, oh, there's that one guy that has subscribed for the last couple of months and he comments on my video and I comment back and he's now a fan. He, he likes my work and he shares it when I post it. And once you do that long enough, you're going to generate thousands of people that are interested and will continue to kind of be a fan and, and share. And it's really interesting. What's really cool about it too, is the potential for um, sharing the gospel and doing things like that. I mean, you could start a, a channel that's just reading the uh, utmost for his highest or something like that. And, People will tune in and watch you read the utmost and do a devotional or something along those lines. There's really a, a lot of great opportunity there um, for the gospel to be spread on YouTube. You're also gonna, you're also going to run into a lot of hatred and um, people who are against that. But where else are you going to get away from that? I mean, that's just the world that we live in now. But, anyways, uh, <laughs> that's uh, no, that's that's great. And so. Um, you're talking about doing a video every day or every other day or three times a week or every week. Uh, that seems like quite a bit, quite a bit of work. And you're talking about doing it for a year, two years. I mean, it's it's a it's an ongoing. Uh, it almost sounds like a grind. It's it's this ongoing, constantly making content. What are some uh, you know ways that you make that content? What technically you mentioned an iPhone? Uh, is it just speaking into an iPhone? Is it just is it just as simple as that? And then uh, is there editing involved? Do you have to have a microphone, lighting? What what all is involved in actually doing this? Well, again, it, it comes back to the quality of the content and you know the the story and just the plain old content. Uh, like we said earlier with filmmaking, but the the neat thing about YouTube is that the barrier of entry is simply an internet connection and a camera of some sort. That's all you really need to become a YouTuber. So every a lot of people in America are blessed to be able to have a mobile phone that probably has YouTube on the app store and a camera that's of decent quality. And you could really just start there. It's all about the content. It's all about what you're creating. You can do a live stream on YouTube. And in fact, YouTube actually incentivizes people to do live streams. They actually give live streams better algorithmic uh, searchability when you're doing a live stream. So that's one tip to kind of get more followers is to do live streams. Um, so what you could do is have your iPhone set up on a tripod and do a live stream talk about fishing or you know that's the thing i keep yeah. coming back to but you could you could talk about how to bait uh, a fish and how to how to attach um a line to a to your you know fishing line i saw i saw one woman was just in her car and she was just laughing and it went viral this viral video of this woman laughing in her car with her just filming herself with her iphone so it's uh it's it's just amazing what is happening, how the landscape is changing. So, David, if people want to see some of your videos on YouTube, how could they do that? Well, I have two channels. One is my personal channel, and it's just my name, Dave Altizer. Not David, but Dave, D-A-V-E-A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. And then the channel that I'm actually working for and producing lots of content for is called Kinotika, and it's spelled K-I-N-O-T-I-K-A. And 
we talk about cameras in particular, and I do reviews on all the new equipment and gear that's coming out. And um, we just do lots of fun videos testing those that's types great. of cameras and things. Well, well, thanks for being on the show. We're out of time. And uh, that's Dave Altizer. You can find that on YouTube. And uh, Dave, thanks for being uh, uh, on the show again. I appreciate it. My pleasure. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.